Here, Here we, we go, go now. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm not reading anything, so. Number one, how dare you? TikTok. <laughs> you can't read TikTok. I'm addicted to TikToks. Dear Lord, woman. <laughs> this is a book podcast. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Okay, should we get started? Yes, let's do it. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Welcome to Our Life in Books, where we talk about our lives, books, and everything in between. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Samantha. And, and we're cousins. cousins. This week, we're talking about what books we would love to see turned into movies. But first, what tea are we drinking? So this week, we're trying the Lemon Soleil, Soleil? Mm-hmm. Yes. Lemon yeah. Soleil tea from Adagio. Um, it's black tea with lemon flavor and marigold flowers. And it is pretty good. It's really good. It first like smelled like lemon drops or like all I could think of at first was like um pine salt or like lemon cleaner. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but it does taste good. It doesn't taste like cleaner. <laughs> no, it tastes really good. I'm glad we picked it for today. It's a nice like fresh yeah. tea. I definitely have been chugging it. <laughs> <laughs> you chug all the tea. <laughs> I do. <laughs> all the caffeine. So what are you reading this week? Okay, so I'm I read this book. I just finished it, and um, I put up a review on my blog. It's called Sparrow by Mary Cecilia Jackson. Um, There are trigger warnings for domestic abuse, child abuse, um, and how do I want to say it? Like emotional abuse? Oh, yeah. So it is about a girl. um, Her nickname is Sparrow. Her real name is Savannah, but she goes by Sparrow. Uh, She's a ballerina. She's very dedicated to being a ballerina. And she gets her first boyfriend, and his name is Tristan. Um, they have, like, one of those movie moments where she's in the high school parking lot, right, like, rushing out of school to get to her ballet lessons, and he almost hits her with his car. So she falls on the ground, and he has to help bandage her up, and then he asks her out to dinner. And then things kind of spiral out of her control. He is super, super controlling. He's got to know where she's at at all times. Um, her dance partner and best friend Lucas um like he Tristan gets very jealous of him and thinks that you know something's going on behind his back and eventually things culminate and Sparrow ends up in the hospital and so then we kind of we get Lucas's perspective too on things and how he's handling it which he's going through a lot in his life too his dad um, got diagnosed with a rare form of cancer that's very aggressive and dies. And so he is kind of catching on to what's happening to Sparrow and tries to talk to her about it and tell her, you know, she needs to get away. Yeah. She doesn't listen. And Sparrow has like a lot of things that happened to her when she was a child too. We kind of get glimpses of that. Her mom was awful to her. And it's a, it is a very, like, I cried a lot. Yeah. A lot. Um, <laughs> But it's also hopeful. Really? And I just feel like, I don't know. I feel like I could have used reading this when I was you know, younger. Yeah, you definitely. Know? You need to know the signs of any kind of abuse, emotional yeah, or physical. Yeah, and I think, it's, I think it's important for people to read it and be able to see those early signs. or Because maybe not every relationship that is controlling is going to end in violence but if it's that controlling it's not good either yeah so yeah i think it's a really important book um it's really good like i said i I just i cried a lot yeah so don't read it at work yeah don't read (laughs) it i was reading i was reading it at lunch today and i was tearing up and i was like oh my god oh (laughs) if anyone at work sees me they're gonna be like what's wrong and then i have to explain yeah yeah definitely it's really really good it's on my tbr i'm excited to read it yeah So what about you? So I am in between books, uh, (laughs) as always, guys, you know. Um, I have just been having a slump just because of everything that's going on in the world right now. Mm -hmm. I've, weirdly enough, should be escaping, and I'm planning to, but I've just been, like, numbing my pain with TikToks. (laughs) So... And soon it'll be numbing your pain with Animal Crossing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, so I'm getting, we're getting ready to read All the Bright Places. Mm -hmm. And I'm also getting to read, getting ready to read, um, another book. 
Uh, I got on NetGalley. Ooh. I'm excited. It is called Loading. It's called Loading. Oh, that is an interesting <laughs> it's title. It's called Tigers Not Daughters <gasps> yes. by Samantha May- Mabry. We're both reading this. Yeah. I'm so excited. I love the mm-hmm. cover. Um, so that's like, like kind of what I'm gearing up to read. It's so, is it a YA contemporary? Um, I believe so. I forget. <laughs> I know. I you remember know how bad we both I am like, about this. We go through these phases where we send each other um, things on NetGalley that we've requested. Yeah. So speaking of that, I was going to tell you. Yeah. I got accepted for a book on NetGalley today that I don't remember requesting. <gasps> what was the title? <laughs> um, don't Look For Me. Yep. We requested. I told oh, you to request okay. that. Well, that one's your fault. <laughs> You're welcome. And um, sorry, let me just... Guess who got denied? <laughs> no. So you're gonna, yeah, so you're going to have to let me know how it was. <gasps> well, you know I'm like at 18% still. I'm just chilling Girl. over here with 18%. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so Tigers Not Daughters is a mm, 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 book. Why a contemporary with magical realism? That's why we wanted it. <gasps> yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, um, backtracking a little bit. Yeah. Don't Look For Me doesn't come out till September, so I've got some time. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah, I'm glad you do. Anyway, so it's a YA mm. contemporary. Yes. Um, so it says, that in the stunning follow-up to her National Book Award long-listed novel, All the Wind in the World, Samantha Mabry mm. weaves an aching magical novel that is one part family drama, one part ghost story, and one part love story. Ooh. Yeah. I, I can see so. why I was pulled in. Right? <laughs> I'm really excited to read this. And the cover is really cool. Yeah. I always. really love it. <laughs> and we're both on a blog tour for this one? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I keep forgetting yeah, which one I know. that we're both on. I know. <laughs> well, I'm really, I'm really excited that you got Don't For Look For Me, because then I can hear all about it. <laughs> so it's like just as good as reading it. <laughs> yeah. Whew. Yeah, um, so my Kindle Unlimited recommendation this month is The Secret Library, A New Keeper by J.C. Gilbert. Ooh, books right? about books. Books about books <sighs> and books about hardcore readers, so I'm, yes. like, down. Ooh, I really like that cover, too. Right? That's what kind of drew me to it, and then also it says library, and I'm like, yes. <laughs> All libraries are magical. Some libraries more magical than others. For Alex Reed, the world is an awkward place, and books are her only escape feel that. Mm, yep, I knew it <laughs> But when she is selected by a mysterious library to be its new keeper, she discovers that some books can be a lot of work. Now Alex must balance her new adventures with the in- incomparable obstacles of being an anxiety-ridden teenager. All this would be completely doable if only Hank would do as he was told. Who's Hank? I don't know. <laughs> so it's a YA fantasy with magic. I like it. I know, right? Um, also, I want to point out that Alex is one of my favorite girl names. Really? I didn't yeah. know that. When, um, and I, I think it all stems from Alex Mack. Do you remember <gasps> that show? I loved Alex Mack. Right? What was it called? The Real World of Alex Mack? I, I honestly can't remember, but... I loved that her name was Alice. And I liked her, too. She was, like, so cool. Yeah. The secret world of Alex That's Mack. it. So, oh, yeah, I've always loved that as a girl's name, and then I happened to marry a guy named Alex. So oh, yeah. Didn't are. she turn into, like, <laughs> silver, like, goop? Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. And then she had a friend that could read a book really, really fast, <gasps> just, like, putting yes. his hand on it. Yes, I forgot about that. Yeah. And we uh, Didn't we always, like, kind of used to do that? We always, like, hold our hands on it and be like, I know I can do I this. I can read this really fast. we got this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that got off track a little yeah, bit. Um, okay, so my prime reading rec this week is called Where the Forest Meets the Stars by Glendy Vanderoff. Um, I actually think I have a copy of this book. But I was going to say, it looks really familiar, right? and I really like the cover. So it is like a contemporary mystery book. It says, a mysterious child teaches two strangers how to love and trust again. After the loss of her mother and her own battle with breast cancer, Joanna Teal returns to her graduate research on nesting birds in rural Illinois, determined to prove that her recent hardships have not broken her. She throws herself into her work from dusk to dawn until her solitary routine is disrupted by the appearance of a mysterious child who shows up at her cabin barefoot and covered in bruises. The girl calls herself Ursa, and she claims to have been sent from the stars to witness five miracles. With concerns about the child's home situation, Joe reluctantly agrees to let her stay, just until she learns more about Ursa's past. 
Jo enlists the help of her reclusive neighbor, Gabriel Nash, to solve the mystery of the charming charming child. (laughs) But the more time they spend together, the more questions they have. How does a young girl not only read, but understand Shakespeare? Why do good things keep happening in her presence? And why aren't Jo and Gabe checking the missing, missing children's website anymore? Though the three have formed an incredible bond, they know difficult choices must be made. As the summer nears an end and Ursa gets closer to her fifth miracle, her dangerous past closes in. When it finally catches up to them, all of their painful secrets will be forced into the open and their fates will be left to the stars. That sounds so good. Right? I feel like that's one that once you pick it up, you're not going to be able to put it down. Oh, definitely. Oh, sounds <sighs> so good. And so that is free on uh, Prime Reading. Oh, awesome. Yes. Okay, some book world news. Yes, we finally get to update you guys yes. on Macmillan I'm and so the whole glad. library ebook embargo. I'm so glad that there's an update and it's a positive right. one. So Macmillan has decided to abandon their old or their new, I guess, um, ebook embargo. It says, yeah, if you guys don't remember, like they were gonna charge upcharge a lot more libraries and. I think a lot of people were, you know, kind of going against them. Yeah, there was a lot of people. Um, what is that called? Boy, boy boycotting. Potting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Boycotting <laughs> Macmillan and not even buying any books from them. Um, they said, effective on Friday, Macmillan will return to the library ebook pricing model that was in effect on October 31st, 2019. In addition, we will be lowering some ebook prices on a short term basis to help expand libraries' collections in these difficult times. Stay safe. So I think that's really, really cool of them. They actually listen to people. It's rare when a big company listens to people. Right. And I, it's really appreciated. The only one I can think of is Patreon. They had changed mm. something where um, uh, money would be coming out of – you'd have to pay extra than mm-hmm. people would instead of – right now we pay for like the – something we pay right. for something and they were going to make the fans and then everyone was like no we don't want that we'd rather yeah. pay and they listen so i think when a company listens it really people really take notice right well and you know people have only been complaining about this for months now so i'm glad they finally did something yes i agree completely and of course um you know they they point out that this this news comes as libraries across the nation are closing their own physical locations yeah so it it just makes it even more important for libraries to have ebooks available. So I was kind of wondering what libraries are going to do because um, this weekend Cedar Falls Library was completely picked over. Oh shoot! So like with everything closing, like are the are they extending the books? Like kind of you know I wonder what libraries are doing. So if anyone out there is a librarian or knows the answer, don't let they us have know. outside drop boxes? So you they can... do, but I was just wondering since it's like. You know, are they going to extend it so yeah. people have more time to read or, you know, because they got multiple books? You know, I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, but they do have – some some do and some don't. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Have you seen that thing where it says – it's at a, a library book drop on the outside and it says, um, if you put a book in here, make a sound or say hello or something so we know you're not a squirrel. Oh, my God. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Love that. I love that so oh, much. Oh, I do too. Oh, I want to say one other thing that I heard is that, you know, all the mini libraries, mm-hmm. a bunch of people are adding like hand sanitizers oh, and sanitary so wipes and stuff. So when people come, they can like, if they need it, they can right. take it oh, along with so a book. Smart. Isn't that awesome? I really want to do one of those so mini libraries I. like outside of my house so I can yeah. just constantly refill it. Same. I got so much books. I wonder now, if that's possible. Uh, Does it have yeah. to be on public property? No, kind of being, no I, I, all the ones in Cedar Falls are, uh, most hmm. of the ones are in uh, I yard. I really want to do one in my Well, and you know who could yard. build one. Right. Kurt. <laughs> right. So we could do I our like feel like one. I live on a dead end and no one is going to come down here. Maybe and also could, I don't want people to know where my house is I at. know, right? Well, maybe we could talk to the the town and see if we could do one in the park. Yeah, another or, one. Yeah, another one. Like in, like in in like another area. Yeah. Because like, what about the Veterans Park? That doesn't have one. That's where it's at. The new Veterans Park? Where's the new vet? Like over where like... The flags and the new... All that new memorial oh, stuff Oh, they is? put one over there too? Two. Oh, no. Not the one where you run around. Okay. The one over on the other side. <laughs> what? Across from like... I don't want to tell where people live. <laughs> um, <laughs> like where the By the train... Is? Pa- but no, where the like train tracks are. There's a park over there. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that one. Yeah. That one doesn't have one. Oh. 
true. There true, we true, go. Okay, back on subject. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, I found this and I thought it was really interesting. So in light of current events, <laughs> um, this Twitter user, fake library statistics, <laughs> um, yeah. They said, hello out there. While we're all looking for something a little lighthearted and fun, why not write a book together? I know the internet, so this could either be an epic failure or funny as heck. Um, so there's a Google Doc, and you can go in there and add to it and read what people have written. And yeah, so the world is writing a book together. I love that. That's it so should cute. just be, yeah, it should be interesting. A um, bunch of people saying, love it so far. Oh, I love that. So I'm in the document. Okay, okay, okay. I'm curious how many chapters there are now. Oh, yeah. Let me check it out. Five so far. Oh, I love that. And there's a glossary. Yeah, there's five chapters so far. That's so fun. Yeah. There's currently 12 people in the document. So that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. So yeah, if you feel like writing and you're bored or you just want to go read it. Yeah, exactly. Now I'm curious. I want to read it. Yeah. <laughs> the great librarian novel. That's so great. Uh -huh. Yeah, I love it. Okay, now we're going to talk about what books we want to see turned into movies. Yes. There's a lot. There is a lot. So when this, doing this list. <laughs> right. This is one of those lists where at, at first, obviously I was going to like all these books that I've read recently. And oh, then I was yeah. like, okay, I've already, like, first of all, I've already talked about these a lot lately. But also, <sighs> you can't have all the books. So, like, I, I finally made myself pick and choose. But then I was going through and I kept coming across books. I'm like, oh, that would be a good one. And I'm like, it's already a movie. Yeah. What is wrong with you? I know. Like, um, I did it with Percy Jackson. Oh, yeah. Uh, P.S. I Love You or P.S. I Still Love You or mm -hmm. P.S. What is it called? To all the boys I've loved before. Yeah, That's there you what go. It is. The, the second one is called that. Yeah. Um, I did it with the Grace Year. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is it called? Well, and I want Six of Crows. Yeah, and I wanted to do it with the Cassandra Clare ones, but there's already a movie and there's already a TV show. Right. I kind of want it to be like the other series, like the mm -hmm. Clockwork series, yes. would be really interesting to do. I want to so, see that. Right. That would be my favorite, but I don't know if they would do that since they've already tried other things, mm -hmm. you know? So I just didn't put that. Yeah. But yeah, there was just so many I ran into where I was like, oh, that would be cool. I even did that with The Hobbit because I was like trying oh, to think yeah. of my favorites. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, that's already a movie. <laughs> I wasn't the biggest fan, but it's a movie already. Yeah. I think I'm a fan because I like watching them all six in a row. Yeah. I watch all of them. Oh, my God. All of them. Girl. <laughs> I love them. What's your favorite Lord of the Rings movie? Which one? I think the first one. Mine's the second. A lot of people don't like the second. Why? I don't know. I love but the I just, second. I like the beginnings of the adventures. Yeah. Like, it's always still, like, positive and hopeful. Um, and then it's by the end where everything's, like, bleak and everyone's yeah. dying. Yeah. <laughs> I like the second one because there's a lot of, like, action and wars. And, like, and then, like, um, the – I can't think of their names. Sorry, guys. Um, the dwarf and the elf yeah. are, like, con like competing on and how many – And my axe. Yep. And my – yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. What else is it? Oh, Harry. I was going to say Harry, Harry Potter is the same way for me, too, though, as far as like which oh, ones are really? my favorite. Yeah, which one's I your like favorite? Goblet of Fire. That is my favorite. Really? Mm -hmm. Because all like so much stuff happens. But it doesn't ruin it for you? Did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? <laughs> he oh, said my favorite calmly. Book. But that, that part bothers yeah. everybody. Just yeah. redo it. <laughs> Fix it. But that, that one's my favorite because it's like it's when things start to get real, you know? Like, I, because I always like but all the beginning trick. thing. Yeah. <laughs> but that's when things start to get, because all the beginning ones, it's like they're still pretty innocent. Like, yeah. things still happen, but mm -hmm. they're pretty innocent. And then that's the one where it turns. Yeah. I don't know. That one's always just been my favorite. I think I'm sick because my favorite is the, the last girl, too. Because it's like that's so. Where everybody dies. But it's, yeah. <laughs> but there's like, I cry every yeah. single time in the book and in the movie and it's like rare for me to like get emotional but i know what's gonna happen mm -hmm. but i don't know why i think that's why it's because i was like i'm always like oh oh no <laughs> <laughs> okay so books that aren't movies or tv shows yet but we want them to right be. so if anyone's listening who writes screenplays <laughs> yes um so my first choice was the air awakened series by elise kova um i just finished the 
second one, Air Awakens Vortex Chronicles, the second mm-hmm. series. Oh, the second series, yeah. Um, yeah. But I would want to see the first series made into a like a TV show probably yeah. because I feel like there's there's five books. There's a lot that happens. I think a TV show would do it better. Mm-hmm. Um, but that one is where the world starts. And so I think that would be a really great – like a great TV show. Yeah. It would just be uh, – it would be fun and so lush. Right. And- if they did it right. Exactly. <laughs> right. Like, that's one complaint. I didn't finish the Shadowhunter series, but I heard they started adding new characters that weren't in the books and all this stuff to I try like and, like, that. prolong it. And it's like, no, just follow. follow. If you follow the series, she's written books that end after. You can keep going. But, no, right. they, like, wanted to change it. And I just, I don't know. Like, they've got plenty of material they can right? use. Why do they need to add things? Or she could keep writing for it, mm-hmm. like um, Cecily Von Zeiger did with Gossip yeah. Girl. Like, there's, you know, it, I don't know. That was my, sorry to get off on a tangent. That was just like, some things can be done incorrectly. Right. And that was kind of handled That's incorrectly, in my opinion. Yes. Okay, so my first one is Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things by Martina McAtee. 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 Yes. We're going to struggle <laughs> with that till the day. I swear. Uh-huh. Because we've been saying it wrong for so for long. For so long. And she didn't correct us once. I know. She's so nice. <laughs> um, I, I think this one would also have to be a TV show just because there's so mm-hmm. much that goes on. Yes. Uh, so I think that I would want to see that as a TV show. And her but four. Ag- yeah. Again, like that's one that would have to be done right. It would have to I be feel done right. Like there's a lot of moving parts. It's like yeah. chess, I feel like. And with, like, the werewolves and stuff, I wouldn't want them to look dumb. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'd be afraid that they'd have them look stupid and that I'd, it would take me out of it completely. Exactly. Or, like, if they didn't match the characters to who they are. Because, mm-hmm. like, she has, like, character cards. Like, right. you have to, like, match them. Yes. In my opinion. And yes. you have to have them. Like, um, the lead guy is um, by. Right. And so you'd have to, like, keep that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You'd have to keep the certain things. And, like, there's, like, that guy who's a ja- jaguar pan- panther. Oh, yeah. So that would have to be done. There would be so much. So I don't know how that would be done. The production value would probably be pretty high. Yeah. But... Or it have to or it'd have to be some sort of, like, anime. Oh. You know? Yeah. That it'd could have be to really be cool. something. Yeah. It'd have to be something. Because I've got the house and everything in my mind because yeah. I've reread it so much. So it's, like, I don't know. Right. But that'd be one that I'd have to be done well. Um, also, uh, um, the, her fourth book is for pre-order on Amazon yeah. right now. So if you haven't, go pre-order it. I did. I'm so excited. <laughs> I don't know when it comes out. I think it's going to be a while because it mm-hmm. just got put out there. She's running. She's also a nurse and is running a publishing company. I swear it was her that I saw that just announced that said she is quitting her nursing job no so way. she can write. Good. No full-time. offense. She's I mean, I mean, she's an amazing nurse, I'm I guessing, think it but was her. she writes amazing. Yeah. So I'm down. Yeah, so she could cuz she's got um another series I think that she's starting. <gasps> Shut up. And I think she said she she was quitting or maybe she's just going part-time nursing part-time. or something. No, cause she so has she kids can too. dedicate more time to writing. I swear it was her. I could be wrong. Because I'm in a couple of different author groups. Fact but. check. Just kidding. Um, yeah. That, yeah. That it comes out awesome. on April 27th, 2020. The fourth book. Sinister Souls and Dead Things. Which cover is that? That's like the dark one with the two dancing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because like I remember in the Facebook group, we had to like, she wanted us to vote if she, if it would be okay if we, she cut the third and fourth book in half and we're like, yeah. Please, yes. That's fine with me. I'm fine with that. But I really want to reread them again. Yeah. The covers I know. are so cool. I know. I For love being them. an indie author, the covers are so cool. Did you find anything about her jobs or anything like that? I want to know what other series um, she's writing, you know? Yeah. So, How do you say it again? What? Martina McAtee. McAtee. Mm-hmm. McAtee. I'm going to forget that every single time. Oh, my computer's thing. I know. Oh, it's probably because I'm also searching the web to see if she has any announcements on her new books. Oh, she has, like, new books coming out. I really want her to come out with new books. <laughs> now I'm, like, super invested to see. Right? I she, swear it was her, and I'm going to feel terrible if it wasn't. It's okay. It's all right. I'm not seeing – she must have just announced it. She announces a lot of stuff on her Facebook group, so I would go join that if you – Could have been another author. <laughs> It could be. All right. We'll get back to you. How about that? Yes. I was supposed to get back on something, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> Remind me, guys. Good talk. Good Remind talk. me in the comments, uh, please. 
Hmm. Maybe it was well, the opposite. Her, her status says former staff. Oh, here RN. it is. Here it is. I found it. Okay. Today, I'm putting in my notice at Cleveland Clinic, Florida. As of May 1st, I will be writing full time. It will mean so many more books for both my pen names, both of her pen <gasps> names. What are her pen names? I don't know. And it just happens to coincide with relaunching the Dead Thing series. I'm super excited. So. Oh my gosh, I'm so it's excited. True. I didn't dream it. <laughs> but also, can you comment on there and ask her what her pen names are so we can go and we can read those books? Right. Because I need some. I might just reread the series. Guys, I'm I not feel, joking. I'm going to feel like a so fake good. fan if I say pen names. Oh, wait. Does someone already say it? Because no. we need to know. Nope. No one has we said it. So know. that's why I feel like fake fan. I know. <laughs> Maybe we don't say it. Maybe Is there we can way? just do a deep dive on that's the That's what I'm thinking. We'll find. deep dive, guys, and we'll, we'll let you guys know. Yes. Okay. All right, ne- your next book. Um, so next I picked the Lifelike series by Jay Kristoff, which is another one that I've just read recently. But um, I think this would be a really fun one because it's set in the future in a very dystopian world. Yeah. And there are AI that are very human. Oh, okay. Um, so much so that you can't quite tell the difference. Um, so I think that would be really fun to see brought to life. Yeah. Like, and... Like, I feel like he does imagery so well. I have it all in my head, but I would still like to see it on the screen. Like, yeah. how desolate everything is. And yeah. everything just sounds so, like, cyberpunk cool. You oh, know? yeah. Like, the way they dress and mm-hmm. everything. I just, I like, I really want to see it brought to life. Oh, that does sound really good. Yeah. So the next one I picked is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I know I just talked about this and we're going to be doing a book to <laughs> or a book review next month on Patreon. But I think this book could be pulled off in a movie. I think that's why mm-hmm. I picked it because I could see it working itself out in a movie. Yeah. Um, You know, it's about a high school senior who's like perfect and... You know, she's on this, like, quest to solve this murder, and it's, like, in a small town. And I just feel like it would be a really good book. Yeah. Or a really good movie. Right. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I think it could be pulled off pretty easily, and it's, like, a little mystery. And I could I could just, like, when I was reading, I could see it coming to life. Mm-hmm. So I, I really would like to see that one. I hope someone picks it up. Yeah, that would be a good one. Right. Um, so my next pick is Along the Same Lines. It's a thriller. Ooh, okay. Uh, the Perfect Girlfriend by Karen Hamilton. Um, This is the one about the woman who gets broken up with and then she becomes a flight attendant because her ex-boyfriend is a pilot and she does all these things to like win him back and like she gets, um, she still has a key to his apartment and so she sneaks in and buys his favorite stuff and leaves it in the freezer or in the fridge for him and like does does all this crazy, no. (gasps) Yeah, it does all this crazy stuff and, like, all this stuff to get him back. And it's such a good thriller that I feel like it would be really good as a movie, too. Yeah. Um, just, like, like Gone Girl and stuff. Like, yeah. how, how how good of a book it was. Like, I feel like they could do a lot with a movie to just, like, bring it to life. Oh, and yeah. And have you on the edge of your seat. It just have more people. Yeah. Have, like, have that story. Gone Girl and um, what is the other Girl one? On the train. Yeah. Those are, like, two that were really well done. Mm-hmm. So, I de- yeah, I agree that that would be such a good movie. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, I picked The Gray Sisters by Joe Tregiari as a good. Yes. I feel like that could be such a good movie. It's a YA suspense thriller. It's about, um, you know, a plane crash, and then it goes to like the siblings and uh, the sibling and how they're dealing with it, and then of they the go survivors. of the survivors, <clears throat> and they go to the crash site, and or then, of the victims of the victims. We say survivors, <laughs> and then there's just like there's two storylines going on, mm-hmm. which I feel like might be hard, but also not. And then how they come together, I just think it would be so interesting, yeah, to show like, you know, the people who are like the mountain, the people. mountain people, and living, you know, and how they like. I don't know. Yeah, I think that would be a really fun one to see play out, too. Yeah. Because I – well, I love books that do that, and I guess I can't think of any movies at the moment. But I'm sure – That do what? Where there's two groups of people that slowly throughout the story converge. Like, you keep going back and forth between the two, and then eventually they converge and their paths cross. And then – it's it gets kind of, crazy. It's kind of like when a when a book or movie shows like the past versus the present and mm-hmm. then like converges. So it's kind of like that. And I think it could be done really well. 
Um, and I think this one's just so interesting. Yeah. And I, I just I when I read it, I could see it. So I feel like if I can see it really yeah. clearly, then it can definitely be done in oh, a yeah. movie form. Also, shameless self plug. If you are a Patreon supporter, oh, you yeah. can listen to our review of that yes, book. Yes, <laughs> where we we get pretty reviewy in, in a lot of them. Basically, we just, just read the book and then come chat with us about well, it. Yeah, we talk about it for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> we, t- we, we need to stop calling them brief reviews because there's nothing yeah, brief about our reviews. Well, we, we also call them mini episodes. Mini episodes. They're not mini. No, they're like longer than our regular <laughs> podcasts. We need to be stopped. <laughs> <laughs> we just need better names for things. Yes, <laughs> so we're not good at naming things. No. <laughs> Um, okay, so my next pick is Internment by Samira Ahmed. Um, I feel like this would be a great one in the same, well, in a similar vein as uh, The Hate You Give. Yeah. Um, it's one of those, it's a YA contemporary that's set in the near future where the United States um, starts gathering all the Muslims and puts them in camps. And it follows, you know, this one girl who doesn't understand you know she's she and she wants to fight back and her parents want just want her to be quiet and get through it and she does not want that at all yeah um but i feel like this would be a really great movie it'd be really topical really timely and it'd be it'd just be perfect for the younger generation to see on yes, screen exactly i agree well and the older generation to be yeah. honest anybody mm-hmm. no i definitely agree with that Okay, my next pick is this Mortal Co- Coil series by Emily Savada. Obviously, I'm going to pick this one because I would love to see this dystopian come to life. It's a YA fantasy dystopian, obviously. And um, it's about just basically this virus. And I kind of see it as like, um, what am I? I'm blanking. Uh, where they're having to hide. And good job, Samantha. Um... Can you think of any dystopians where they're, like, having to, like, kind of, like, a mix between Bird Box and... I um, haven't seen that. Okay. Or, or, um, or uh, where it's John Krasinski's book. Oh, um, the, the Quiet Place. Yes. Yeah. So kind of like that where, like, everyone, like, you don't see people because basically when you get infected, you have two to three weeks or whatever or, like, or like a week or something and basically you explode. Oh, God. And send the virus everywhere. And then if you inhale it, then you are infected and then you have a week and then you and you go oh crazy. God. So it'd be like a really intense dystopian, but it also has tech involved because yeah. there's tech incorporated into your body. And there's also like people are trying to like um, fix the disease and it's very like post-apocalyptic bunkers. So I feel like that's a that's really timely too right oh my so God. like the 100 have you ever read or watched mm-hmm. that so it's kind of like that the 100 there's a bunch of disease that like killed the planet and then people are up in space and then they send the troubled teeds down to see if it's like okay li- ha- habitable and it is but then they encounter all these like other things like not this is the toxins of the nuclear but like you know, enemies. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like that in a bit, like all mixed together. But I really think that this would be a good like TV series. Yeah. It sounds like it. Yeah. It's very timely too. Yeah. Really. No <laughs> kidding. Um, okay. So my next pick is another thriller. Uh, I feel like I just talked about this not too long ago. Um, it's called My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. Um, it's about a couple who has been together for 15 years. They have kids and like they've just gotten into that routine where oh, they're bored yeah. in their marriage and they decide to spice it up mm-hmm. with murder. <laughs> so they kind of like the two of them scour the internet, like looking at women's profiles and trying to find the perfect woman to kill. That's crazy. And um, it's it's like one of those books with unreliable narrators where you're not sure who to believe, the husband or the wife, what's really going on and who's doing what. And it's really good. And it it reminds me of Gone Girl a little bit. And I think that they could do that really well, too. Yeah. I just really, I don't know. I just really like the idea of that. I feel like it's like Gone Girl meets Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Yeah. Like. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. I just feel like it would, yeah, that would play out really well on screen. And I would 100% watch oh, that. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Okay, so my next one is 
Jennifer L. Armentrout's The Lux series, oh, the YA yeah. fantasy. So I think this could be done in either um, a TV show or it could be like Twilight where they did like each book is a movie. Yeah. Because there is uh, five books and I feel like it's very Twilight-esque where it's like, you know – to like basically she's but i love that she's a book nerd Mm -hmm. so she's a blog you remember she's like a blogger vlogger whatever yeah and they like first hate each other and then they like each other and then they realize that like there's an outside enemy and they have to like fight to protect their family and it go they go on this whole journey to like throughout the books protecting their family and also trying to fight for like equal rights between um her and his I'm not trying to spoil anything. Race. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, in the synopsis, it's not, okay, the alien race. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was making sure I wasn't spoiling it. So it's kind of like reminds me of Twilight a little mm-hmm. bit. So I think that it could work in a mo- like movie seg, like yeah. movies, or it could work as a TV show. I would like to see, I always saw it as movies, but I kind of want like indie movies. I really like indie movies. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I would love to see this come to light, though. I really want to Seriously, read that again. That, and then that would push me to actually read it. It's so good. <laughs> I've been pushing you to read it. I know. I just, I really like it. <laughs> I will <real> like it. <laughs> um. So my next pick is Sadie by yes. Courtney Summers. I wanted to pick this, but I saw you did. <laughs> we both really love this book. Um. This is another one of those where the two storylines, you, you get past and present and they're slowly meeting in the middle. Um. But it's about a missing girl and she is out to find her sister's killer. Um, and while she's missing and you're following her on her journey to, you know, find her sister's killer, we're also following this podcast that is talking about her disappearance. And I feel like they could really do that well. Oh, definitely. You know, like, I I mean, I felt like the book was done really well because the the segments that were the podcast – Felt like you were reading the script of a podcast. Definitely. Um, but yeah, I think that would be really fun to play out on screen. And maybe they'd give us an ending that wasn't so vague. I know, right? <laughs> it was, yeah. I like the ending, but I also I, like. Yeah, I do like it. I do. But I want answers. <laughs> right. I do like endings that are not tied up in a bow. Yeah. But sometimes I want some answers that aren't in my own head because then I'm just going to give it a happy ending and be unhappy. <laughs> I gave an, I gave mine a ha- happy ending. Right. I'm not trying to spoil anything, but I gave mine a happy ending right. because that's who I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would really like to see that one as a movie. Mm-hmm. That would be a good movie. Yeah. So my next pick is 10 by Gretchen McNeil and it's a Y mystery horror. Ooh. So that is the one I know I talked about this a while ago, but it's one where these 10 kids go to an island because they get told that they're invited to this like popular girl's mansion. So they all show up, but they don't know where she's at. And there's a big storm and they all like basically are just like having fun partying or whatever. And then a DVD is like gets played because they're like, oh, let's watch a movie. And it says vengeance is mine. And so basically the storm's raging and they wake up and someone's dead. Oh. And it's basically like the trapped yeah, the closed, ha- room yeah mystery. closed room mystery where they can't figure they like all of them are acting weird and they don't know each other like they're all from different schools and so they don't know who to trust some are like you know being really sketchy and they're mm-hmm. just getting to know people and there's a, those points where they're like you know having weapons at each other being like do i trust you do you trust yeah. me like it's so good so i think that would be a really good oh yeah movie. that would be really good yeah Ooh. it reminds me of like clue a little bit not campy yeah <laughs> clue mixed with like a little bit of like scream yeah it's kind of when i read it i kind of like felt that way because in the scream movies you didn't know who was the right. killer yeah or like i know what you did little summer or whatever you know like those can't those campy ones but not campy they yeah. weren't campy then okay <laughs> <laughs> they were actually scary to some of us <laughs> me <laughs> right <sighs> <sighs> okay so the next one i picked is the three dark crown series I think that would be another one that would be good as a either a TV show or as a series. Yeah, movie yeah. series. Um, but I really want to see that brought to life. I know, like, when I read book one, it took me a while to get into because there's so many characters and so many settings and just all this stuff all at once. But I think it could be done so well as, like, on screen where you would, you know, you would 
you'd be able to tell all the different places apart. Like right away, you could get sucked oh, in yeah. and be like Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, where there's definitely. All the different houses and stuff. Well, and I can picture like like you know the poison and all that like seeing all that or seeing like the flowers or the animals like i feel like it'd be so like fantasy it'd be very visual very visual Mm -hmm. and i feel like you could play with like the coloring of it i think that would be one that would be really good plus i I want to i like i i don't know what i have in my head for the three for the triplets so that's another like i want to see her idea of what they look like because i've seen a lot of fan art but I'm not, like, I don't know. I guess I don't really have, because they're triplets, so mm-hmm. they've got to look alike. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm curious who they would get to play that role, too. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that'd be really interesting. And if they're going to do, if they would do the thing where they have one actress play all three. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. yeah that would be cool. Uh-huh. Uh, that's, oh, God. Yeah, I want yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> all right. So, I picked um, this si- Serena. Siri Legacy. Um, it's of Poison by Anna Banks. There's oh, okay. three books. Um, I read this a long time ago. I don't know if I ever talked about it. Um, I actually have the physical copies from Book Outlet. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's basically about um, like uh, kind of reminds me of like Ariel in a way. Oh, okay. So it's like an underwater um, oh god it's, sorry guys it's been a while since I read it. I'm trying <laughs> not to like I know like what happened so I'm yeah. trying not to spoil it. Um, but basically, um, there's a prince of Serena, um, and he's um, looking to like. Um, okay, sorry, I'm saying I'm a lot. Uh, so he runs into this girl, and these guys are supposed to be invisible to anybody. And the girl sees him, and he's like, "Whoa, okay, like, why can you see me?" So he's like intrigued, and then he figures out that she like maybe has some gifts, and he's like looking for help to like save his kingdom. And it's just very, like, fantasy and underwater. And I would yeah. be interested to see if that could be pulled off. Right. I know that would be kind of difficult. But that would be really fun. It would and be so much fun. that could almost be a cool one as an anime or exactly. something, too. Exactly. That's what I was thinking, too, because it's a lot of underwater and, like, her learning to, like, be underwater mm-hmm. and like but like being on top because she's from land so she right. doesn't understand it so to like see all the differences and i think yeah. that'd be really cool to see Ooh, yeah, yeah that would be good i like it now i want to read it too <laughs> you should definitely read it it's three books it's really good um okay so my last one was a kendara blake book but i'm gonna go another kendara blake and say i want to see anna dressed in blood yes. as a movie um, it remind it does remind me a lot of uh, Supernatural because he is a guy that drives around and tries to get rid of ghosts for people. I kind of pictured Supernatural when I read and it. She, so I was reading some like Q&A, author Q&A things, and she had never heard of the show when she wrote this book. Oh, what? Yeah. So, but I think that would be, oh, it would be so fun turned into a movie I just, I really yeah. loved this book. So did I. Have you read the second one yet? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, have I read it. it right after. Because I don't want it to end. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they both would be good as movies, but it. I feel like it'd be best as a movie, like, you know, to like a duology oh, movie I, I or whatever. Agree. I think it should be, or if they could like put it all into one, that'd be fine too. I yeah. don't know if they could. Right. But I think, yeah, I really liked that book. Yeah. It did remind me a lot of Supernatural. So, but it's one guy that drives around and yeah. kills the dead. Exactly. Oh, Okay. My next pick would be A Blade So Black by L.L. Oh, McKinney. Yes. So it's basically like a real world version of Alice in Wonderland mm-hmm. with um, an African-American character. And it's very like she's wants to save um, – was it called Wonderland? I think so. Yeah, she wants to save Wonderland, yeah. but she also like has to deal with her mom, who's like, you know, she has to like make excuses about where she's going. Mm-hmm. And she also like the Hatter is like attractive right? and interesting. And it's just I feel like this would be such a good TV series or or book or book or movie. I keep saying book <laughs> or duology. Well, there's only two out so far. But right. I just feel like this would be really, really good. Mm-hmm. And I could picture, like, all the colors. It could be, like, I picture, like, Brooklyn or Chicago, and then you dive down, and it's, like, yes. crazy colors. Yes, I love that. Yeah. Because she's fighting Nightmare, so I think that would be fun, too, oh, to see. Oh, that would see. be so cool. Oh. And, like, that final, like, there's, like, a battle, and, like, just to see, like, her, like, in action. I just, yeah. 
and I know he's too old for the role now, but I really loved um, oh Sebastian Sam yeah. as the Hatter in Once Upon a Time. Yeah. So that was who I pictured as the Hatter in this because really? I love him so yeah. much. Well, he was pretty punk, so you know what I pictured? Um, he's the lead singer of Panic at the Disco. That's oh, who my I, goodness. That's, yes. I don't know why, but like, that's who I pictured I him as. Like, I pictured him as more Yuri. of like, yeah, I pictured it more of like an emo. Yeah. Because yeah. he is like emo. So that's how I pictured. <laughs> I just, when I was watching Once Upon a Time, I loved oh. him as the Mad Hatter and he did not have enough time on screen no, on that show in my opinion they and i think they tried to do a spinoff but it didn't yeah. work which sucks right but i yeah if he was younger i would love to see him yeah in that role. yeah come back as the hatter again <laughs> um okay so my next one is daughter of smoke and bone by laney taylor i freaking love this series and yeah. it would be so great to see be so cool all the different characters I think the thing that would freak me out the most is the teeth. Yeah. I, that would be really – that part would be really hard to watch because I think there's some scenes where they're taking teeth from people. So that would be difficult. But, um, like, I want I want to see the blue hair. I want to see um, – what's his name? Her, like, father figure. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't think of it. Brimstone. But, yeah. Um, I want to see him. I want to see the – her man the half angel Akiva. guy or whatever uh, yeah I akiva it's yeah it's akiva good lord of all the books like i remember all this stuff about this um but also Prague. like i want to see it set yeah. in Prague. oh my god i think this could be one that could be a really good anime as well oh yeah right yes especially because her husband is an author laney taylor's husband or not an author an artist and he drew all this stuff for Night of Cake and Puppets. Oh, really? He drew all the – yeah, because it's a – it's like a graphic yeah, novel, I yeah. think. He drew all the illustrations for that. Okay, well, now you're going to have to draw us a whole Right? Wouldn't anime. it be great if they could partner up and make this into an anime show? It would be, I'd watch it. He would be the artist. She would write all the stuff. Oh, oh that would be awesome. All right, Perfect. Do it, guys. <laughs> Let us know. Oh, okay, my next one is Deadly Little Secrets by Lori Far- Faria Stolars. Sorry. It's a YA fantasy paranormal. Um, I found this book in a library. So I have the first two and then I got the rest on Kindle Unlimited. Mm -hmm. So um, this girl turns 16 and then this guy comes into town and her life starts becoming a little weird. Um, He has a bunch of like... um, rumors going around about him about like his ex-girlfriend died and like people are like really freaked out about around him except for her she um uh sorry she's drawn to him and doesn't understand why and she's getting like um these secret notes and she's very confused on like why people are telling him to stay away from her when she feels drawn to him Mm -hmm. it's so interesting i said it was called um and it's called the touch series um, and basically through the, I think they have five, um, books, but Ooh. basically like without spoiling anything, he feels like his life is destined for something and he mm-hmm. doesn't know what. And she starts having these psycho, psych, psycho chemistry, chemistry, like, um, brushes with people. Like she'll brush Ooh. someone and like feel like what's mm-hmm. going to happen to them. And um, so, like, they both are doing different things, like, following their own tracks of what's going on, but they can't, like, they still feel a connection to each other. Mm -hmm. And basically, at the end of the series, it all leads up to this big thing that they're meant to, meant for. It's very interesting. So, it's, like, set in the real world with a little bit of, like, magical realism, I would say, in it. So it's it was very like I read the whole series very fast. It's because you're trying to figure out why what they're both meant for, but right. they're both definitely meant for something. They just both don't know what it is until the final, and it's so good. That sounds so good. It's so good. So do you think it would be better as a like a like a limited TV series? Yeah, maybe? I think so, like a Netflix series because there's where five there's books. a very set number of yes, where they don't try to like add anything because I think it was done really good. Every book added on to the mystery and it, mm-hmm. it at the fifth one you finalize it and then right. it was done you know so yeah. yeah i definitely think like a limited series would be good oh, I love, that sounds really good it I was very good yeah 
I feel like I'm just growing my TBR. Same. <laughs> same. Well, we picked the last one the yes, same. I didn't realize did. it. <laughs> um, so it's Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. Um, honestly, I went to her list of books because I've read all but two, I think, of her books. And I was like, okay, which one would I most want to see made into a movie? And it's this one because it's about best friends. And I love that. You know, the one um, the one girl leaves and leaves her friend a note or yeah. a, a list of things to do because she knows her friend is very shy. And if she leaves her, who is it? Sloan and Emily. Emily. Um, so Emily is very shy and reserved. And Sloan knows that if she's not there for the summer, uh, Emily's not going to do anything. Yeah. She's and, basically going to be holed up in her house. And I think she's worried about the next year of like her life not mm-hmm. having any friends because she's only close to Sloan. Right. So Sloan leaves her this list of things to finish for the summer and em- Emily feels compelled to finish it and to do these things. And it's just really it's really good. And I think she thinks that if she does them, she'll know where Sloan went. She'll yeah. figure it out. So it's right. kind of like a little bit of a mystery because mm-hmm. she's trying to figure out where her best friend went and right. why. And I I picked this because I just thought it could be done so well into a into a movie, into mm-hmm. a, like a one movie. Right. Where it's like a little bit of a mystery and you just follow this girl around as she does like these tasks. Yeah. It's a little bit of a mystery, but it's also like set in the summer and it's very summertime and happy. Yeah. It's and not I like think... a scary mystery. It's like more no. of a – like a little sad because she misses her friend, but it's more of like a – Watching a girl an adventure, blossom. yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like there's something else I was gonna say about it. Sorry. But either way, it's it's really good. It is like the little things is like pick apple picking at night. Okay, easy. Dance until dawn. Sure, why not? Kiss a stranger. Um, go skinny dipping. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's just I don't know. I really liked reading it, and I just think that it would be such a good like. Young, young, it's a fun friends movie. Feel good, yeah. yeah. I think it really, it really be good for people to watch. Right, really, any of her books would be good turned into movies. Honestly, yeah. But I think this is the one that I would want to see like first. Yes, this is the one. <laughs> if we have to pick, this is the one we want to see yep. first. <laughs> so you guys should let us know what books you want to see turned into movies or TV right. shows. And explain, like, maybe why. Because I really like to hear, like, why. Like, how we went through, yeah. like, oh, it should be a movie or an anime or a TV show or a mm-hmm. limited series. Right. I mean, any books turning into anything digital, I'm in. I'm down for right? it. Let's do it. <laughs> the old, my only problem is my TBR just keeps getting bigger because I want to watch all these things, but I can't watch it until I read the book. Oh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because we have – it's just how we do it. I know someone suggested that we – watch the book or we watch the movie or TV show and then read the book, but I just can't. Yeah. I want to have that world in my head. I want to have my ideas of what everything is going to be and then see someone else's ideas. Yes, because if we watch the movie or TV show and then read the book, we're just going to be waiting for that the things to happen. Yeah. We're going to be just flipping through it to get to, you know, right. A, B, C, or D. And I can enjoy a movie – if it's not just like the book, but I feel like I can't enjoy the book once I've seen the movie. Yeah. And it's not the same. Mm hmm. Yeah. And I'll just be I'll just be reading to. Get to the the what happens. I right. won't be enjoying I won't enjoy the journey. Right. Because um, someone had mentioned that um, the second season of you doesn't quite follow hidden bodies and so we could watch it without really spoiling the book. But I still really want to read the book first. Yeah, I agree. Um, I just feel like I want to know how the story is supposed to go, and then I'll watch it, and, and that'll I, be a separate thing. Exactly. Just like Gossip Girl. Like, we read the books, mm-hmm. and we watched the show, and it's okay that they're different because it's okay. Right. Um, I'm not mad at either one of them, and I'm right. not going to be mad at you if it doesn't follow Hidden Bodies. But I won't. then I won't ever read Hidden Bodies because I've watched that yeah. Hidden Bodies. Right. You know? Yeah. I don't know why. It's just a thing that we have. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe some other people can do it, but we can't. No, I cannot. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we better get going. We've got more tea to drink and books to read. All of our social medias are down below. Make sure to rate and review the podcast wherever you listen. And subscribe. And subscribe. <laughs> if you're not already, we are everywhere you listen to podcasts mm-hmm. as, well as, you, as well as YouTube. And go follow us on Instagram. We've been doing some videos on there as yes. well as our YouTube page. 
So we're, we're just learning doing, IGTV. We're learning all of these things, guys. We're learning, okay? <laughs> um, come get personal with us on Patreon, where you can get bloopers, fun after episodes, and soon to be renamed mini episodes because they, right. they're not mini. No, they're not. Um, we call them that, but they're not. They're longer than our regular. They're like an hour and a half to two hours sometimes. We have a problem. <laughs> and we, um, you know, our pricing has changed. So just go check it out. And I think that's really it. Yeah. We look forward to more bookish things in the next yes. couple months. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Yes. Wash your hands. Stay safe out there. Go get supplies and just, you know. Hunker down. Yeah. Hunker down and let's all get through this together. Yep. Yeah. Enjoy those books. <laughs> yes. Read all of the books. <laughs> all right. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.